There are few things more rewarding than belonging to a loving family. Christian Assembly Berkshires is made up of a variety of people from many different backgrounds and cultures. Every Sunday we meet as a church, but throughout the week there are activities aimed at meeting the needs of kids, teenagers, and adults. Our vision is simple, helping people follow Jesus. Here, nobody's perfect. Beginners are welcome. Forgiveness is offered. Hope is alive. And it's okay to not be okay. We are everyday people looking to discover and experience the abundant life Jesus promised to anyone who would say yes to following him. Enjoy the message. Let me continue. I want to continue on our, our, uh, our journey as we've begun this year. We're already into the second month called Essentials. The, insen- the Essentials to Endure. The word essential means absolutely necessary, absolutely vital. What's necessary? What's absolutely vital? That's what we've been talking about on Sunday mornings. Uh, the goal is to refresh your follow life and at the same time for you to evaluate your follow life because we all drift uh, in different ways. We live in a world that uh, it just keeps us so busy. There's so much pressure in life today on all of you. It's just easy to drift. So I want you to refresh your follow life, evaluate your follow life, and at the same time, I pray that you would take things in so you could teach and lead others in their follow life. Um, like in LGRs, just that kind of uh, idea that you would be able to, hey, these are the essentials everybody needs. I can share this with folks. So we're, uh, we're on essential number four today. Essential number one we looked at was what does saved mean? We talked about the word saved. That it literally means delivered, delivered from my sin. And then the second essential we looked at was now that I'm saved, what do I do? We talked about everybody has to begin a daily personal relationship with the word of God reading the entire Word of God. It's a whole life journey, and we, we gave you. We have one on the church app. Uh, the, sh- the papers are still out there in the foyer. It's just one way that you could take during the week, and I would help you read through the Scriptures, the Word of God. And we talked about these on each individual Sunday. Last week, what does prayer have to do with me? We talked about growing your very own personal prayer life. Jesus said, when you pray, So we talked about when, we talked about where, we talked about what. Growing your very own prayer life last week. So this morning, I want to talk to you about essential number four. Why is church important? I I pray you pay attention. I'll be preaching to the choir because you're all at church today. So that's good. Amen. Let me begin in Hebrews 10, 25. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much more as you see the day approaching. Big D, that day approaching is when Jesus comes back. And so I want to show you the same verse in the Amplified Bible. The Amplified is very wordy. It's looking for us to have understanding, so they have a lot of definition words in there. But this is the same verse in in the Amplified Bible. Not forsaking or neglecting to assemble together, as believers, as is the habit of some people, but admonishing or warning and urging and encouraging one another, and all the more faithfully as you see the day approaching. So God's word makes it clear that it is essential that we assemble together as believers. You know, one of the underlying dangers of COVID when we hit that was this idea, and I'll put it in my own words. The idea is this. Look how clever we are. We can have church without assembling together. Now, listen, I appreciate the live streaming, especially while we were making our way through a global crisis we never seen before. But as you can see in Hebrews, it was already becoming a habit when Hebrews was written, as is the habit of some people. They were already saying, well, whether we meet or don't meet, you know, we just, you know, if it works or doesn't work. That was already happening thousands of years ago. 
So when that took place in COVID, as a pastor, one of the things that I observed, that I still observe today, is the excitement of that, and I understand how we shifted to that. However, you're not gathering together in your bed on a screen, watching people preach and teach and sing songs. That's not what Hebrews was talking about when they said, don't forsake the gathering together. Last week we read in 1 Peter, when, when it came to prayer, 1 Peter 4, 7, I believe, he said, the end of all things is at hand. The end of all things is at hand. He's talking about, okay, the end of all things. So be you know, sober-minded and have self-control so you can pray. We talked about the end of all things is at hand. What God wants us to do is get ready to pray. So again, here we read uh, that when the day is approaching, which is the end of all things, when Jesus comes back, continue to gather together. That's why it is an essential, because it's clear. Uh, the scripture is saying, listen, as we barrel towards the end of all things, this is what God wants us to be doing. That's why these things are essential. So what I want to talk to you today about is gathering or assembling together. Assembling together. If we surrender to the biblical purpose of assembling together or church, it can become life-changing. It can become your favorite day again or your favorite time again. Because I know it isn't now. Thank you for those amens. But it can be again if we understand why God has said, hey, the believers need to gather together and don't forsake it and don't get in the habit that it isn't important, especially now that you see that day approaching. Here's what Jesus said to the woman at the well in John 4, 23. He said, but the time is coming. Indeed, it's here now when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. The Father is looking for those who will worship him that way. So, Every follow life needs corporate worship. Every follow life needs corporate worship, which is done with other believers, and it's done in spirit and and in truth. And the scripture says, the time is now. And that was, again, a long time ago. The time is now. And Jesus said, the Father is looking For these kind of worshipers, they worship in spirit and in truth. He's looking to inhabit the corporate, the praises of his people. And to manifest himself and show himself mighty as his believers gather together. Because when you're outside of that time when the believers are gathering together and you're out in the world, unless you're gathering with a few at your home, the world is not glorifying God. The world is not manifesting God to you. It's doing the exact opposite. Jesus said, Satan is the God of this world. So they're trying to do the opposite. So he's trying to tell you, this is of vast importance. Jesus was telling that Samaritan woman. As a matter of fact, she was saying to him, if you go in John chapter 4 this afternoon, you want to read it. He, she was saying to him, we, we Samaritans worship over here and do this and that. The Jews worship over there and do this and that. And he, that's when he said, listen, I'm telling you a time is coming where this is what God's looking for. Worship, worshipers to worship him in spirit and in truth together. The spirit and in truth. To worship in spirit. I mean, what does that mean? To worship in truth. What does that mean? Did you get up today and come and say, I'm going to worship in spirit and truth with other believers? Or does, or does the world have us captured because they tell us, oh, you're going to your religious belief. You're going to church. Well, church is a Bible word. We're going to church, but that's not. We're not coming here to do religion. Religion is what the world makes up. Religion is how men and women invite God into their life. That's not what we're doing here. This is how we're worshiping the God that created us. In religion, we're in charge of God. But that's what the world tells us we're doing. What's your religious belief? I'm like, well, I don't know if I have a religious belief. I'm a born-again believer uh, in in the word of God, and Jesus is my savior, and I know then we're going to, you know, go back and forth, but they don't get to control. 
because he's seeking us to worship in spirit and in truth. He's not seeking religion. This is what was told to the Ephesian church in Ephesians 5. This was told to a church. Don't be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life. The reason why some people don't come to church on Sunday morning is because Saturday night they're fulfilling the first sentence. But that's another message. Don't be drunk with wine because it will ruin your life. Instead of that, put that down. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves. If you come here and don't sing, shame on you. You're not participating. You're not worshiping in spirit and in truth. This isn't about your personality style. Oh, I, I, don't, I don't sing in public. I don't. This is about worship. This is us gathering together, not forsaking the assembling together. And when we get together, what are we going to do when we get together? Well, we saw in John, we need to worship in spirit and in truth. And we need to wrestle with what that means and understand what that means. And pray and cry out and go to the word of God and see what it means. Well, part of what we found is in Ephesians 5. Don't be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life. Well, it's interesting that when you find what they're going to be doing together in church, he begins it with, I know what getting drunk does. I know why the world goes out Saturday night. We don't even think about this. We don't even connect it. But it's connected. I'm connecting it to you now. That's why everybody's out Saturday night. That's why you need to go to bed early on Saturday night. So you can on Sunday, whatever service you want to come to, you're prepared, body, soul, and spirit, to worship in spirit and in truth, not here by the skin of your teeth, barely awake. Not because of me, because the spirit of God is here. God is saying, what are you doing? This is the 1.2% of the time we gather together. Remember, I, sh I shared that with you. If there's seven days a week, seven times 24 is what, 168? And we're in church, maybe I gave two hours if you're here, once a week altogether, that's 1.2. It's 1.19% of your week. So prepare for it, right? Get yourself ready so you can get everything God has. And you don't even need more than that. If God could just get 1.2% of your time, he'd change your life. That's how powerful it is if we come to worship God, if we come to gather together, if we come to focus on the Spirit and in truth, not worried about all the other stuff. So I didn't even get through this verse. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit, singing songs and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves and making music to the Lord in your hearts. The music doesn't even start up here. It starts in your heart. <clears throat> if you come late, well, I don't like the music part. I just come for the word. You don't come for worship. You're one of those, I like Bible teaching people. So what? So what? Are you here Wednesday night? That's when we do Bible teaching. We go through books of the Bible. This isn't about Bible teaching. This isn't about knowledge. Knowledge puffs up. This is about worship. So you need to be here for the music because of that. I'll give you other verses if you want. And you need to stand up. If you come with a song in your heart, I've said this before. You know, the world has stolen our song. You know, God, as God's music is his song, oh, I like the old hymns, good. Oh, the old hymns in your heart, good for you. Sing the old hymns in your heart and come and we we'll worship together. Whatever you want to sing, sing, but you got to make sure it's not 80s on 8 that has your heart or 70s on 7 or Breeze 1039, the new FM out of Albany. I know all that stuff. I'm not telling you, you know, if you listen to that, you're not going to heaven, but what's the music that has your heart? You know, are you singing blessed assurance, Jesus is mine, or living on a prayer? What's in your heart, right? What do you catch yourself singing in the shower? <clears throat> Making music to the Lord in our hearts and give thanks for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We gather to one of the reasons we're gathering to worship in spirit and in truth, to sing songs and hymns and spiritual songs in our hearts and amongst one another, making music and giving thanks. 
Come into his gates with thanksgiving in your heart. And if you had a terrible week, then it's a sacrifice of thanksgiving. I want you to understand how valuable and important biblically this time is. Not Sunday morning. It's just this is the time we gather. Whenever the local church gathers together, how important that is. And if you see it in Scripture, how important it is, maybe you can connect. This is why I come angry. This is why I come irritated. This is why I come mad. This is why this is the only two hours of the week I just don't have my thing together because if there's a spiritual battle happening. The enemy he wants you to miss all of God, what God has for you when we gather. So the enemy wants you to think, it's just church. It's not going to change your life if you miss church today. Then something's wrong with you. Not church. I'm waiting for church to get holy. Are you serious? Church doesn't get holy. We get holy. We're holy. You bring your holiness in. The spirit is in you. And we gather together. And we sing and worship. We don't criticize we sing and worship, making melody in our hearts, singing songs and praising and thanking God and lifting each other up and exhorting one another and talking to one another. Don't come right at 920 and sit in your chair and put your head down and get up when I start praying at the end. You don't even know what you're doing here then. You're missing an essential of your life. Not me preaching. I'm not keeping a record of you coming. And it has nothing to do with that. It has to do with this. You get transformed. Something's different when we all get together. Something happens when I, I'm in my own prayer closet early in the morning praying. And I appreciate that and God moves. But there's something different when I'm here with you. And you're praying too. And you're singing too. And you're with me too. Something's different when we gather together. That's why at the beginning, even in, we read in Hebrews, the enemy already had a plan. The plan was you get out of the habit of meeting together. Don't meet together. That habit was already happening. We assemble for corporate spirit-filled singing of songs and making music and giving thanks for everything to God in Christ Jesus, right? That's what he said. If thanks for everything, that's God's will for you. It's God's will for you to come here and do that. But you have to participate. You have to engage. You have a free will. You have to break through your own flesh, your own lethargy, your own, what you're scared about, your own critiques, the things that irritate you. You have to be disciplined enough to put those aside for the moments we gather together and sing and worship and pray and listen and be transformed and let the word of God change you. You have to do that. You have to come ready to do that. That's on you and the Lord. So if church stinks, it's on you. If you're like, I don't like my church, it's because of you. That's what I'm telling you. That's right. I'm not saying we need to change. We need to uh, pass if you put the lights down. And That's junk. That's frivolous surface junk. If you come ready and I come ready, no one can stop us. It doesn't matter how good the week was, how bad the week was, how lousy my preaching's going to be, whether you like the songs or not, whether the sound system worked or not. None of that stuff will matter. That's just systems and stuff. That's not spirit and truth. If we come, they didn't even have this back then. And the place shook. Good thing it doesn't shake now. You know how much that would cost us insurance-wise? Good thing we're not that spiritual. Please, please, as I've begged you to understand what it means to be born again and be saved, as I've begged you, please begin to read the Bible, the whole thing. As I begged you last week, please get your own personal prayer life. I beg you today, please understand the biblical essential, the call to assemble together. It has to become important again. It is not eighth on the list. Well, if we don't have a birthday party or my favorite team isn't playing or my kid doesn't have a soccer game, a football game, or a basketball game, or a hockey game, or a tennis game, we'll come. I can say that. All my kids played sports. I know. I know the struggle of it all. I know the struggle of it all. I had kids. I was a full-time teacher before I was a pastor and all that. 
I came to church, not to check it off a list, because I needed you, and I needed you to be there, because life was hard, and I was in the public school, they weren't telling me, praise God, hey, let me pray for you, teacher, let me, they weren't doing that to me, the only place they were doing that was here, or I wasn't here, I was in another geographic location, but the church, I was there, and those weird, goofy people all of a sudden became a need in my life, I needed you. I needed you praying. I needed you uh, lifting your hands. I needed you uh, doing whatever you were doing. It just brought me back. It reminded me, these are my people. These are the people filled with the Spirit of God. This is where the things of eternity are being taught and worshiped and glorified. Everything that happens out there right now, it'll be gone tomorrow. What's happening here today is eternal things. Your worship, your prayer, the Word of God are eternal things. The people you're with, you're going to be with them forever. So straighten your life back out, and church needs to become a center again of your own life. Not me making it a rule and a law. If you're not in church three times a week, we're taking you off the membership. I don't, you know, we're all done with all of that stuff. But if it becomes a center of your life, like, hey, this again is, I need to be here. If I can possibly be here, I need to be here all the time. That's why I don't live stream Sunday morning. I know other people do. Uh, many, many pastor friends of mine do. I'm not against it. But I sat and prayed, and I just felt the Lord said, they need to come. They need to gather. So gather. There's, there's messages go out. You know, we're about a month behind on YouTube and Facebook. If there's shut-ins and you didn't get here, you want to rewatch messages, I'm, I'm for all that. But the live stream was this idea you don't have to come. You have to come, get up, take a shower, brush your teeth, put the yoga on, and get here. It matters. Your life matters. It matters to be here. It matters. And if it's not for you, then pull your pants up. We need you here. I need you here. I need your worship. I need your spirit. I need your gifts. I need to see your face. Shake your hand. Hug you. And the people next to you need you. We're the body of Christ. I don't tell my foot today, oh, I don't need you today. I need you. You're needed. That's what it says. That's what he's talking about. This is what what he wrote to the Corinthian church, Paul. He said, well, brothers and sisters, let's summarize when you meet together. Remember last week he said, when you pray? Well, if you don't, you can get the message. When you meet together. So he's not saying if, he's saying when you meet. Now, you can meet Sunday morning, you can meet Sunday night, you can meet Wednesday night, you can meet Friday night. It doesn't matter when. Jesus made it clear. Doesn't matter when you meet. But so this is when we meet. So when we meet together, let's summarize. One, one will sing. This is, I think, the only place you find any kind of where you can get any kind of order in a church. Um of just kind of what happens. So he's saying, listen, when you meet, uh, one sings, another teaches and preaches. So there's singing and there's teaching and preaches and others may tell some special revelation. Someone may stand and give a word, prophecy, a word of knowledge. We, we, we were talking about that Wednesday night because we're going through 1 Corinthians. We're talking about the utterance gifts. We had a great uh, study last Wednesday night. Some tell special revelation God has given. One will speak in a tongue and since it's all together, you have to have somebody interpret. One will interpret, but everything that is done must strengthen all of you, must build each other up. The goal is to build each other up, not for you to come and get what, what you need to get, but to, but to build each other up. And so when we meet together, which is, again, 1.2% of the week, you come here, there's singing and teaching and a, a prophecy, a word, a preaching. There may be a tongue and an interpretation or an altar time and prayer and uh, there's fellowship that can happen and the goal of strengthening and encouraging and building each other up. We wouldn't, if we, he wouldn't put it there if you didn't need it, if I didn't need it, if we didn't need it. We need this. Church is not like a restaurant or a store. Oh, we're having a sale this week. Uh, You know, if you come in early, you get this or that. Or uh, if you come in the spring at the early service, it's 7% tithe, cut three. That's not what church is. Church is a living, it's, it's people coming and gathering. It's not like a restaurant. And don't go to this church for this program, that church for that program. Get, you, get, get rooted in a local church because you need to belong there. Not skip. We're not like a gym. Well, I go to this gym for the legs, this gym for the workout, and then I... That's not what church is. 
Church, is the, it's a living organism. It's the body. Pray where God would put you and have you and be there and be part of that church, that local church, as I know you are. Amen. 1 Corinthians 12, 27, all of you together are Christ's body. All of you together are Christ's body. Each of you is a part. So if the whole body's going to, if part of my body wasn't working when I played football, I was on the injured list. We wore blue shirts back then. They called us the blueberries when you walked out to practice at UMass. And there was a little shame because you had the blue shirt on. You couldn't play. But I needed my body healthy to function, to, to get done what I was called to get done when I played football at UMass. I'm telling you, you know, I know that's, a, that's a, a worldly illustration, but if I can carry at least some of it over into the spiritual world, the whole body is needed. The whole body is needed for, for God uh, to do all that he wants to do. Everybody's a part. Everybody's needed. I want you to understand that. Everybody's needed. The full move of the spirit and the work of the, the word and the gifts to flow it means there's a healthy body and everybody understands, hey, I need to be there. The body's meeting. I'm part of the body of Christ. So let me show you the paragraph in Acts chapter 2 when the church first started. You know, and they didn't have strategy meetings and they just what they had was they, they were filled with the spirit and they had the word of Jesus and this is what they did and I know it's not 2,000 years ago so we're not going to wear our sandals and take our donkeys and walk downtown after to the market but let's glean what they did the foundation that never changes that's the issue here so it says all the believers devoted themselves to the apostles teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals including the lord's supper and to prayer verse 43 a deep sense of awe came over them all you know what that awe is it's the fear of the lord that's what church needs today a deep sense of the fear of the lord in awe of God. Then you know what happened after that? The apostles performed many miracles, signs, and wonders. So you're one of those, oh, when are we going to get that happening? Well, do the first part. And maybe we'll see. Devote yourself. Live in the fear of the Lord. Right? That's the part. Then all of a sudden there were miracles and signs and wonders. Verse 44. You know, I'm right here. All the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. There was this generosity. Some of them sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. And you don't have to sell everything and bring it here. But, you know, God puts it on your heart. There was this generosity meeting needs. Uh, verse 46, they worshiped together at the temple. They went each day. They met in homes, LGRs, for the Lord's Supper. And they shared their meals with great joy and generosity. Verse 47, all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And look at the last verse. These verses, right up to this period, all here, this is the evangelism playbook. Because when this was happening, each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. That's what people tell me. We got to get people saved in here. Well, I got you. I got you the framework right here. This is how it works. So take a look, right? Take a look at it. They, they all devoted themselves. That's why earlier I said, that's on you, that's on you. Because you, devotion is in your own heart. And you do, you're devoted to stuff. You may not know, but you know you, what you spend your time thinking about, daydreaming about, what you spend your money on, and what you spend your gifts and talents doing. That's what you're devoted to. So we all have devotion. What happened in the church, the first thing that happened was they didn't create this incredible building and this incredible vision first. The first thing that happened was the believers that were spirit-filled, that were born again and were so grateful that they were delivered from their sin, they just devoted themselves. There was self-devotion. They had personal responsibility to devote themselves to the doctrine and to meeting and to sharing life and to praying. They devoted themselves. I can't devote you. So I'm not going to try to program you here. You have to devote yourself. You have to look in the mirror. Say, Lord, what do you want to do with my life? 
And then you have to decide, is God worthy enough to be in charge of your life? Is he worthy? Who gets to be in charge? Or is he, a, I'll swing by Sunday if it's raining because I can't go on my boat. That's for somebody here, I don't know. But if you need to invite me on your boat when it's sunny, I'll come out and talk to you about it. They all met together in one place. They devoted themselves and they said, we're going to meet together. They all met together in one place. And they worshipped together. And it even says, at the temple. They went to a geographic location together. The church is not the building. If you're still saying that, you're in 15 years ago's argument. No one's saying the building is the church. But my goodness, we need a geographic location so we can all meet together. That's 850 William Street. Why do we play like we don't? So we want to take care of the place and grateful for it because we want the last verse to happen. We want people to, we want God to add to the church. People say the church isn't the building. No one's saying the church is the building. But if the church is going to all meet together in one place, even they still went to the old temple. Even they did that. They went to one place. They went to a geographic location at the same time and did church stuff like sing and preach, and teach, and fellowship, and pray, and sing songs, and that's what they did, because it matters, because God designed that to matter. That's why it matters. They worshiped together at the temple. God began to send people and save people. That's what happens. It's not the other way around. Evangelism begins with our devotion to our God. And he'll draw people. I'm not telling you you're not supposed to go and evangelize and talk to people. That's not what I'm telling you. But if it's going to authentically happen, so we add people to the church that are being saved. One of the worst things that happen is we add people and they're not being saved. They just like church. They like our programs. So they come, but they're not born again. If you're here today, you need to be born again. God wants to add those being saved, not just these are the numbers in the church. Well, how many are in the Lamb's Book of Life? Not on the church membership. Hopefully every one. Who's being saved? That's who God adds. So listen, we, we, we cannot neglect meeting together. We have to take personal responsibility for our own attitudes, our mindset, our behavior, participation when it comes time to participate. I beg you, participate in our take five, our little thing that just says take five minutes before you walk in the door every Sunday and just take those five T's. What am I thankful for? What does he want to teach me? Who can I touch or minister to today? What does he want to transform in me and what's my takeaway? It'll just shift your mind because I know where your mind is walking in. I know the world and the enemy. They know where they have you because they do the same to me. It's the same for me. I drive down 850, I drive down William Street many, many Sunday mornings not wanting to come here. Just like you. I'm just like you. Say, Lord, change my heart right now. I'll be sitting in that chair next to my beautiful wife. And Kevin's about done. And I'm like, Lord, I'm not ready. Change my heart. I'm critical. I'm tired. I'm not even, I don't even remember the last two songs he sang. Because my mind was gone. So you want to be honest? I'll be honest. I'm like, I hope he's got one more song. Or I need grace right now. Because I haven't been here, although I've been here. I know what it's like. I know what it's like to be distracted by this. So many, e it's so easy to be distracted by a billion things at church. But we have to have the discipline to say, spirit and in truth. Spirit and in truth. Whether the coffee's hot or cold, or they have muffins or bagels, or, or you look and say, well, they have muffins, that's great, but I'm gluten-free. They have gluten-free muffins. Well, I'm gluten-free, but now I'm not gluten-free muffins. I need vegetables. Do they have where's? You see where your mind's going? Whatever that stuff is, who cares? Take it, take it or leave it or not. Spirit and in truth. In here, if God moves and works in our eternal lives and transforms and teaches, who cares what muffin or coffee or tea you have? You can go home and have all that you want. Come on. Well, the, the stairs should have been shoveled better. And you're going to think about it the whole time. Well, you're right. They should have been shoveled better. We're, we're working on it. We didn't know it was going to ice, snow, sleet, rain, heat, cold. We didn't know. So, you know, we're trying. Wear your boots and get here. 
And when you get in here, worship. Give yourself to worship in the word. God, who do you want me to minister to? Who do you want me to talk to? Who do you want me to hug? Who do you want me to, whose hand do you want me to shake? If you do that, he'll meet your need in this room during the time you're here. Come early for pre-service. Uh, I have given the, the 8.30 to 9 right now to the, our, uh, our uh, intercessory team comes and they're here and there's music and they're just, you know, come early. Come early, pastor. I barely can get up. Go to bed early. Well, you can tape all the games now or we watch them. They're all on a hundred times. See if church, the way it is biblically, can help change your life, right? Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as in the manner of some, but exhorting one another, right? That's what we're here to do. Who you, who'd you come to exhort today to lift up, to build up? Hey, good to see you. Hey, you build me up. Thank you for being here. And so much the more as you see the day approaching. And so much the more. Should we be coming to church more or less because the day is approaching? So much the more because Jesus is coming back and it's the things done in this gathering that are eternal. Not the things being done out there right now. When they're done, they're done. They're gone forever. Because they're not of the kingdom of God. They're not of the things of God. They're not of the son of God. They're not eternal things. These are. That's why the enemy wants you to do everything else you could do on a Sunday morning. Except come here. And when you're here, he doesn't want you to be involved. He wants you to be like a spectator. Like it's a game or something. We need you. You're part of the body. So I want to walk you through a few things. This only happens when we gather together. There's people with their hands up. There's people with their eyes closed. There's people with their head down. Maybe they're ashamed. Maybe they're going through sin. Maybe the people with their hands up are worshiping, thanking God. There's people looking straight ahead. They're just contemplating what's going on, what's happening. You don't know what's going on. But something happens when we get together. This isn't going to happen tomorrow morning at work, I guarantee it, or school. This only happens here, and not a lot of time, just a few minutes this kind of worship that where Jesus' lives are being changed right there in those moments. Eternity, things are happening in those moments that can only happen because you came. You were here. Can you say amen? These things happen only because you come and you're here. Sometimes it's a little bit different. We eat together. We celebrate. We remember. We did this at missions. The place was full. We ate. But you have to come. You have to be a part. When Pastor Mazzello was here, a pastor from yesteryear, was anointed, the word he spoke, anointed. I know why he was here for 10 years. Something happens when you do go stuff like this. That's just not out for dinner. That's an anointing that happens there. Something happens. Sometimes you meet up at the altar with a group of a few other guys. This ain't happening at work. I bet these guys haven't done it since they did it that day. That was a Sunday morning. I forget how it all went down. But they were up over there, huddled together, four young men just praying together, asking God to help them. That's what happens at church. That doesn't happen at work. That doesn't happen while you're watching the game. That doesn't happen on the golf course. That doesn't happen at the mall. That doesn't happen at home online. It happens when you're here. It's different when I feel your arm touch my neck and my arm grabs your neck and I hear your voice and I smell your breath as you're praying. And I'm with you. Something happens. That's why God is a people God. You get called all to the altar. I've been at this altar many, many times in the last almost 14 years. And gathered with you. And if I've been here many times by myself alone. And it is different. I'm grateful for the presence of God when I'm here alone. But there is something different when you're standing next to me. And I feel your shoulder rub my shoulder. And I hear your voice. And I look and see your hand. And the tear coming down your face. Or you're in the back, just like this. But you're up here because you're struggling and having a hard time. But you're here. And you're needed then too. I don't care how good your life is or how bad your life is. We gather at the altar. You don't do that at work. They don't even have altars. They don't even have them. Uh. Or sometimes a whole group of men. 
I bet none of these men did it since we did it that day. All the men came up. We got in a huddle. Men are used to getting in huddles. And we just prayed for each other. We prayed for each other. We prayed for each other. That happens when you decide to come to church. So you can watch it on TV if you want, but you weren't there. You weren't part of that. Sometimes we eat. We laugh. We have cake. We fellowship. That was until we had a missionary. We just went on, we were on the other side of the building. It's not like just going out for dessert somewhere else. It's with people that are filled with the Spirit. Sometimes you get water baptized right here in church. It changes your life and it changes others' lives. Because you came to church, because you heard the word of God, because you obeyed. So you got baptized, you got to share your testimony, and it went forth. Sometimes you come and get baptized and then you become a deacon. Sometimes God raises you up to leadership. And you didn't know when you were in this tank that God said, you think the only thing you're doing is going in this tank? I'm raising you up to leadership. And Ron's now a deacon here. He didn't know that then. That happens because he made a commitment to come to church. That's what happens when you come to church. Do you need to be baptized? Are you being called to leadership? You'll never know if you don't come. You got to come. You got to at least come and show up and make it a commitment. You may meet the man that built this cross. Because that's who that is. I met him some years back. Rena's brother. Some of you know his name. I'm not going to go into it. But he built the cross that's up behind there. And that cross is significant because when my wife and I were praying about coming here, my wife said, God just told me, you know, he said it's just going to be as clear as a cross. Something like that. That may not be the specific words. And so we were in that room. They were grilling us for about seven hours, the deacons, by the way, like grilling me. What are you going to do now? What are you going to do about this? What are you going to do? I'm sweating. (laughs) Am I in trouble with the FBI? No. They were really, really good. They were really, really good. Some of them are here. But they walked us out in the sanctuary, and my wife looked up, and that was it for her. She went like, oh, my goodness. That's it. That's why that's significant. That's why that's in church. Sometimes you get wrapped in toilet paper at church. (laughs) Sometimes you race cars at church. Sometimes you, you, you build uh, cups at church. Sometimes, if you're lucky enough, you watch the pastor put a p- pie in his wife's face at church. You're like, oh, when was this? You didn't come. Ha! Huh? You should have come. Sometimes you see the inner pastor. Hey, you didn't come. You weren't there. I know what you're saying. Pastor, is that you crying out? It might be. Pray for me. That's a missionary I was on the other side of the building that Wednesday night talking to the kids how Jesus is better than Superman, but I still love dressing up in the Superman suit. Uh, You may meet a prophet. You might meet a prophet. You might get called up front, and the deacons and the elders and the wives come and pray for you. That happens at church. There's something powerful when you obey the scripture and you're being prayed over by leadership. That happens at your church when you go to church. You might meet people from a whole other country and become friends with them and LGR with them. And then when they dedicate their baby, which ones don't belong? (laughs) Then when they dedicate their baby, they ask you to come up and stand in the middle and hold the baby because you're part of the family now. That happens at church. That's what the Spirit of God does at church. It doesn't matter what color your skin is. It's the Spirit of God living on the inside. That happens at church. You might meet your wife. You might meet your wife at church. You might have a close girlfriend for many years and get married in the middle of a service at church. This was the middle of a Sunday morning service. That's Dan and Tina. The week before this Sunday, he came up to me because I was preaching on living right. And he said, Pastor, we never knew what you just said. We never knew. We've been together for 20 plus years. We're not married. I said, let's get you married. How about next Sunday? That Tuesday, they went downtown, got the paperwork. That next Sunday, we married them. That happened at church. In a church service, that's going to happen next month again. You keep coming. There's more people talking to me about this. But this is really why. 
because this stuff happens. We all got together. We came up to this altar. We cried out and prayed. Things like this stay with me for weeks. They don't happen if you're not there, if you don't come, if you don't participate, if you don't understand your need to be here. I don't care if you've got everything right with God or you understand everything, but you come and you're here, you're growing in your follow life. We, we, we just all got all the way up to the altar and we worshiped and prayed. This happens nowhere else but when you assemble together with the people around you. Just a few Sunday nights ago, about 50 plus of us came up here and we sat our behinds down. It had to be over an hour. And everybody took the microphone one at a time and we just called up names of unsaved friends and family. And this, when someone had the mic and they said the names, we agreed with every name they said. I didn't know all the names. I knew a couple, the ones I said and my wife said. It had to be over an hour. We sat on the altar because we said, we're coming into your throne room robed in your righteousness, Lord, and we're not going till every single name we leave at your feet because you said you want none to perish and all to come to repentance. And you said, if you uh, abide in me and my word abides in you, you ask what you desire and it will be done unto you. And we said, this is what we desire. So we didn't look at the clock. We didn't think about work the next day. We came up here and we just prayed for names. Souls. That happens only at church. When you come and I come. Don't forsake the assembling together. You'll have every excuse not to come. But you get yourself here. Not because I said so. Please. Because he said so. You need to be here every time we meet. If you can't be here, it's an emergency. I'm not saying that out of guilt or anything like that. Please. But if we're meeting and you're home on the couch, get here. Who knows? You're on assignment. And when we meet, your assignment is to be here. We need you here. You're a part of all this. I want to invite you to stand. My last picture is, even though the world thinks we're goofy, we all know church is cool. <laughs> church is cool. I'm not going to have us sing a song. I didn't quite know how to end. I had these pictures here. It was amazing for me this week to just go back. It wasn't hard to find these pictures and places. And even I was reminded myself, wow, we need to, we need to make sure we're in church. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day coming. I don't know why it's hard for you to come, but I respect that it is. And when you're not here, I don't think twice. I don't think bad about you. I want you to know, if I haven't seen you in a while and you come in, my thought isn't where you've been. My thought's good to see you. That's all. This is... You don't have to worry about me. I can tell you right now, you do not have to worry about me. And you being here and not being here. That's not what this message was about at all. And numbers and attendance. This was about your growth. This was about the church becoming something again that God has called it to be. And you're already here. Thank you for being here. When you see people not here, would you pray for them? Don't rass them. The last thing, if you've been away for three months, the last thing you need when you come in is for someone to rass you, right? Hey, good to see you. Save your rass for maybe a couple weeks later if you know them well. But you know, isn't it hard when life gets hard and you haven't been to church for a while for whatever reason and you're like, okay, I gotta go. And you know you need to go and you're like, what are they gonna say? What are they gonna, let's just eliminate that stuff. It's good to see you. We've missed you for sure. Good to see you. And let's just engage in worship in spirit and in truth. Father, we just thank you for your, we thank you, Lord, for church. 
the called out ones, the ones that are here. And uh, we understand from your word, Lord, that as the day approaches where you're coming more and more, that to the day of you coming and the clouds rolling back and all of that, Lord, we know dimly you've given us enough word and enough in your word to understand you're coming again. And we know it's sooner. We don't know when. But we do know this, you've called us to be in your word, you've called us to pray, and you've called us to gather together, to not forsake or get in the habit of not meeting, because you do something when we're all together. So I pray for that again for each one here. I pray for those that haven't been here for a while, Lord, that believe, well, my life, I just can't make it, that they believe it, that that's, and that's a lie. You, you're not going to tell people to gather and then not let them come. And I don't know everybody's life, Lord, but we pray for them right now. Our brothers and sisters that don't come, aren't able to come, or, uh, but it's really a choice. So we pray for them that you would touch them, move on their heart, move in their life. Help us to love them. We, we, we've all been in their shoes. We all have that season when that stuff happens, Lord. So we love them. We're not judging them, but we pray for them right now, Lord. And then I pray for everybody in here the folks that come, that when we come, we would understand how precious the minutes are when we gather here to sing, to be involved with whatever's happening, whatever the move of your spirit is, that, that assembly, that gathering time, because we want you to move and work. We want you to manifest your presence, Lord. We know that you want the word preached and, the, and gifts to go out and singing and fellowship. And we read all that generosity. And we know that you want those added to the church that are being saved. And we pray that for this church. Would you help us, Lord? Each and every one of us needs the grace and the mercy and the, and the pity of God to be able to do that, Lord. And make it consistent. Help us to understand and experience while we're together, biblically, the things you said we're going to experience and happen to us if we gather together with one another. Help us to see the importance of each other and the need to give ourselves to the gathering together. And we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen.